Stacy is about to come on and blow your minds in terms of creating your next experience that just, oh my gosh, delivers what you intended, the transformation, the destiny changing, uh, you know, experience that you're out to create with your retreat. Stacy and I are going to dive into that conversation. Before we go there though, I'm talking to you because you're becoming your greatest possible self. And however I can support you in doing that more effectively, would love to explore that and see what we can do together to keep growing. So whether it's coming on the 12-hour marathon as a guest, getting your message out, whether it's, you know, staying connected with the show, tuning in, whether it's launching your own podcast, whatever I can do to support you, let's talk. Okay, thanks for being here. Next up is going to be the iTunes review of the week. Jen Hudgen says, love this podcast. This podcast is so motivating. I love the caliber of guests and the energy Chris brings to the show each and every time. Thanks so much, Jen. I appreciate you for tuning in. And if you want to get a chance to get shouted out on a future 12-hour live stream all day long, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search greatest possible self on the podcast store and give us a review there. Looking forward to hearing from you. What do you love? What do you want to see more of? And how can we make the show even better? Okay, so thanks so much for that feedback. I'm going to introduce Stacy in just a second here. Before that, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes because this woman has decades of experience that will transform your ability to put on epic retreats. She's working with some of the most like epic people uh, and influencers and coaches and leaders, personal development, business, and she's just awesome, awesome woman. So stay tuned all the way through till the end because one of these ideas has the power to change everything for you. Let's introduce Stacy and then we'll bring her on. Stacy Meredith Cohen is a retreat designer for high-level coaches and teachers who are developing their live in-person experiential retreats and transformational opportunities. Stacy has spent over 20 years creating retreats all over the world. Her wisdom comes from her many years in progressive education as a high school dean of students, creating programs in counseling, leadership, advisory, and service immersion. Stacy is passionate about people living their fullest and best life. Oh my gosh, greatest possible self, let's go! She developed the love for cultures and the planet through her father who couldn't bring her to the world. So instead, he brought the world to her by taking Stacy to tons of different restaurants all around Manhattan. He would tell her how much more alike we all are on the planet than different. This gave Stacy a love for humanity that she weaves through all that she does. Retreats are Stacy's art and passion. And we're blessed to have Stacy with us here today. Stacy, are you ready to rock the house, Superwoman? Yeah, definitely, yes. definitely, definitely. Awesome. We're live on right. Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Thank you for being here. And we are going to dive right into the theme of today, Stacy, which is transformational travel. What does that mean for you? Ah, transformational travel, it gives me goosebumps. It means that you are going to have an experience that's going to mirror to you the truth and essence of who you are really mm. are mm. because a retreat doesn't change somebody a retreat enhances what's already true about somebody and mm. brings them just to another elevate you know when you, you leave your regular confines and your regular routine you you can kind of sometimes you see more clearly yeah. more about yourself and yeah. that's what i think transformational treats are they're just they give me goosebumps i love it i love it it's yeah. it's like that reflection you know awareness i i keep hearing you know throughout the day and i'm sure i'll continue to hear that traveling and these transformational experiences it like just gives you insight into who you are as a soul your purpose here like get out of the you know the the regular groove of things the momentum of life that can take people into this kind of numbing place where it's like you're not even present to the to the magic to the miracles you know seeing trees like blossom and bloom and you know leaves and and how the miracle of life works to get re-present to that i think i keep hearing is is one of the biggest themes of today i think you just made a new word re-present yes re-presence <laughs> re-presence <laughs> yeah it's so true it's a re-presence to mm. coming back home yeah yeah. And, you know, I loved, um, as I was listening to you introduce me, um, that is really true about my dad taking me to all these places, restaurants, museums, all kinds of things where I'd experience cultural, I, I consider myself a cultural anthropologist in a way that I want to know 
people's stories and want to know how they break bread together. I want to, you know, experience and have the, and I love when people get to have those experiences because it weaves the tapestry of humanity more closely together than like all these opportunities, the ways that we can divide real fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's when we see the different cultures, we, we feel that love. We feel yeah. more love. We experience more love. So I, I love that. And you're you're really doing that. You're facilitating that greater purpose of connecting humanity with love through these retreats and managing retreats, doing amazing things. Tell us a little bit more in your own words of how you're serving your clients today, Stacey. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I, um, I'm serving my clients in a variety of ways, either um, doing you know a lot of logistics and planning and designing and mm -hmm. thinking about the end in mind and try and doing a kind of curriculum design backwards of like, how do you want your, your clients on your retreat to be able to do, have and feel when they're done and when they go home and like they still have the laundry to do. You know, like we want to be able to take what we experience on the retreat yeah. and apply it to still like, oh, I got to mow the lawn. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> how can you mow the lawn more joyously from the experience of the retreat and fold the laundry more joyously from the experience of the you have on the retreat? So mm. I really do a lot of de curriculum design, back, black backward planning and um, and logistics and the designing a through uh, like a heart line, a through thread for the retreat. So like mm. each activity has an inhale and an exhale and an inhale and an mm. exhale, because you can't just like throw all these activities and rituals and tradition, all this stuff at people, yeah. they have to have opportunity to digest. I mean, wow. it's like almost like if you eat too much, you yeah. ingest too much, you have yeah. to digest. So yeah. I work with clients to help them create that really like flow in mm -hmm. their retreat so that there's flexibility, there's intentionality, there's all of the things that make for that whole retreat. Every, I mean, even down to the, the way the room is set up, the way mm -hmm. the, each meal, what happened, you know, you don't want to do some crazy heavy meal and then um, it's a dance party that right. evening. Like you're going to have everybody be like, whoa. Right. Or do some <laughs> so how do we, like, serious energy work. Like right. <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want that. <laughs> and helping to hold space on retreats. Yeah. Um, I've mm. seen a lot, done a lot and experienced a lot with other people. And so I love to also be someone who has a very keen eye on the whole thing for my client who's sitting in the front of the room and doing the teaching. But I'm also mm. noticing, oh, that person is really not present. Like mm. might go talk to her or him after and just kind of like, how do I keep weaving everybody together mm. it for the client? Wow. So you, you can be at the retreat and like mm -hmm. part of that could be a facilitation with you is included in your services as well as just helping with like logistics and planning and things like that. You can get involved at, at both levels. Yeah, at so. all the levels. And also I like working with the clients of helping them to think, you know, when you when a, a coach is designing a retreat, they're very focused on the retreat. But I also help them to like, what about after the retreat? How are mm. you going to serve your clients after the retreat because everybody goes home back to their lives. And I'm not saying like you sell them something at the retreat. I'm actually not a fan of that. Mm. I think it makes more sense for a coach to include. And when you go home, at, we will meet again in whatever you decide, six, five, six, seven, ten 10 days from the retreat. We'll meet together again, process mm. a little bit more. How is it integrating back into your life? Where are yeah. you challenged? Because Yes, it was amazing to live in Costa Rica for five days, and now we're back in suburbia. How do we like <laughs> make that happen? How do you bring what you experience back home with you? Is that's a truly transformational retreat? And a lot of my clients are like, "Oh, I hadn't thought about after the retreat," hmm. and understandably so. It's not a diss on them because they're like, "Oh, I want to build this retreat," but I want to see the retreats include the post care. Yeah, I guess you could call it aftercare. Yeah. from the retreat for and, the client. And like really it's it's in the client or the attendee's best interest. How do you create 
instant transformation because of like the full immersion of a retreat like that's that's in the scope of things instant transformation that a lot of the processing and exercises and experiences of that is like very very closely spaced together that doesn't mean we have to you know jam a bunch of stuff together but it in the scope of thing it's it's all very quickly and how do we have spaced repetition of you know after a week or two weeks or a month or three months or six months you know what is the structure as a service provider to say I know that life is going to get in the way. What do I have in place to be able to to facilitate getting through these times and making sure the deepest yeah. integration happens? Yeah, because you want to take home the tools and the practices that you learned and the insights. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe it's um, even uh, a week after that uh, a coach offers, you know, a, um, a service of part of the retreat, you know, whole program is speaking with those clients a week later mm -hmm. and then a, like a two month check in like, Hey, let's check in and see how yeah. it's still unfolding yeah. Yeah. and That's great. bring them back to the experience. I mean, a lot of times when you give like soulfully curated gifts at the end of a retreat or like, you know, they have, like have like their cool tote bag or whatever. It's like, that's also an, it's not only like a gift, it's an anchor piece to remind mm -hmm. the client of what they experienced that like, I don't know. I don't have anything right in front of me that I've received on a retreat. At, but like, whenever I see those things, I, I'm like, oh yeah, that was real and true. Yeah. I still have the, actually the same rock that I you have used since I took a trip with a group of teenagers to Nicaragua, and it's this mm. stone. We didn't have a talking piece, and I was like, we're on the beach. I was like, okay, that rock, and I use that rock all the time. Wow. And it's like, it anchors me back for how many words have been shared because people like to hold something when they're yep. in a circle. It kind of helps dial down the awkwardness and the nervousness to share. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always see people like doing this kind of thing. <laughs> and so I carry th this rock I use that I was like, wow. oh, we need a talking stick or a talking piece. Mm -hmm. And so when you give a gift to your clients, think about, you know, how they can have those pieces of memorabilia around in their life to anchor them back to those transformative moments on the retreat that then could be like, yes, okay. I remember that breathing exercise or I remember that art mm. exercise that we did. That felt really good and true. <sighs> and then we go on with, the, you know, more in our life. Yeah. This is so powerful. We're just like coming out the gate swinging with this, <laughs> yeah. Stacey. This is, this I is love great. this stuff. This is great. So I want to go back in your journey because you had some experience uh, as the dean and, you know, creating these programs and experiences for, for kids. Tell us about that. How did you get started um, with that? Tell us about the beginning of your journey. Oh, sure. Well, my beginning of my journey, I used to, um, I first started out as a kindergarten teacher very long time ago in the Waldorf uh, educational philosophy, which is under the umbrella of anthroposophy, the study of wisdom of humans. Mm. <clears throat> and I loved it. I loved the magic and the wonderment of early childhood and everything in Waldorf is done very beautifully. Every mm. element is, um, if you've ever been to a Waldorf school, like it's painted very beautifully. All of the toys are very um, thoughtfully made of natural materials. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. But what the philosophy really talks about is that when humans are surrounding themselves in beauty, their moral, ethical, intellectual, and spiritual and creative developments can kind of like weave together even more beautifully than, you know, when we're in like a cinder block, you know, cubicle. Yeah. Which you can see how that would work. So that's where I started. And I was like, everything was done with an intentionality and an essence and a beauty and like a, a thoughtful mindfulness. And I loved that. And after a number of years of being with in Waldorf, I was like, Oh, I don't know if I can really be with kindergartners for like the long <laughs> journey. <laughs> and a friend of mine said, I always thought you'd be great with teenagers. Mm. And I was like, what? teenager I loved te I, I had a very interesting and exciting teenage life myself I was very awake and alert as a teenager and knew I watch I savvy on the social sphere <laughs> um and I said oh I I don't know about high schoolers because I've never felt extremely proficient enough in you know math or English to teach a subject matter like that and she right. said no there's a job called the dean of students where you're in charge of all the social emotional rituals traditions the uh, like 
the um, co-curricular activities of a high school. Wow. And I was like, what? How do you get that job? <laughs> And she said, she told me, and, you know, and it, I, I kind of did all of the things to apply and, you know, work on that career path. And okay. lo and behold, I became the Dean of Students. And I, it was a very, very fun time in my life. It was, I built a lot of programs mm -hmm. um, and I worked for very progressive schools. So yes, some of my students actually were smudged with white sage on some of their retreats. I mean, they were like, and they'd roll their eyes, but I'm like, come on, it smells good. You know, like just relax, <laughs> like let it wash over you. <laughs> like my teenage, some of my teenagers thought it was probably kind of whacked. I would have them pick, you know, Oracle cards and yeah, stuff. I'm like, yeah. oh, if the card resonates, awesome. If it doesn't, pick another one. Like I wasn't tight about the spirituality that I brought it's to so them, but awesome. it was very fun. We traveled, um, all over, uh, my school had, uh, the school that I spent the most time at, I was with for almost 14 years and every year, um, the students get to pick either, um, what was called intercession. So an on-campus immersion program or oh. an international travel. And I was very interested in a lot of the international travel. So I would do programs. Um, you know, we went to Thailand and I went to China and went to Nicaragua and a couple other places and um, built a program, a Vision Quest program in uh, Death Valley, California for high school seniors that were launching where they had to do a four day um, solo without a tent. I mean, they have a sleeping bag, but like intense stuff. So big, like Dang. transformational experiences and holding massive amounts of energy and space for these teenagers to really expand their perception of the world. Wow. And um, wow. that was also part of my background in transformational psychology and women's and gender, uh, women's and gender studies and mm -hmm. um, some art therapy courses that I've taken and counseling courses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's where it was. And then not too long ago, honestly, Chris, like a friend of mine said what I asked me what I loved as I was kind of doing this entrepreneur path and, you know, trying things and like feeling like that was getting traction. But then I was like, mm, it's not really sticking. And, you know, how we do as entrepreneurs, yep. we like weave and pivot and swerve. Yeah. And <laughs> she said, what was your favorite part of being the high school dean? And I said, oh, building those retreats and travel trips. I did. I because each grade level went on one to two retreats a year with me. Wow. So, and that was for 14 years. Like wow. we, we built a lot and That's they intense. got better and better and better and better all the time. Mm -hmm. And she said, what, what about a business where you support coaches and teachers in doing this? You have so much experience. And I said, I don't know, would somebody really want that? And she was like, uh, I do. I'm a coach and a teacher mm -hmm. and I would like your help. So that's where mm -hmm. it started. And I was like, oh, I love that. I would love to help more coaches and teachers be with their clients in person because I love the online world. I think mm -hmm. it's awesome. I've bought many programs myself. I'm involved in a group coaching things online and all of this stuff. But I really think that clients and us humans, mm -hmm. we, we are, we've gone this way really, really far with all of the online Technology, stuff. And I yep. think like, let's be with one another. Like, I wish yeah. I was sitting in the same studio as you and like, I could like, you know, touch your arm when we yeah. laugh about something or like all of that. So we're craving some more human connection. And I would love to, I love to help uh, coaches reach those places with their clients. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah, it. It's, it's, I think we have this natural intuitive calling and desire to, experience that but a lot of people just don't even address it they're not aware of that need they don't know how to verbalize it they don't know how to you know facilitate it as a coach to facilitate that for other people and that's why i think what you do is so valuable to bring that to bridge the gap of what their soul wants and what we want as human beings and delivering value and also making a great living doing it yeah, definitely. Retreats um, can be uh, either some coaches, you know, do like a um, six month program and a final retreat at mm -hmm. the end. Um, mm -hmm. Some coaches are doing like multiple retreats throughout a year long program. Some are doing one off retreats. Um, yeah, it's just a really nice way. I think that it also has the potential and I've seen it. So it's not even, I, I'm seeing it reinvigorate the coach to the work that he or she is doing. Wow. 
I have a friend who just finished a retreat in um, Cape Cod and like, yes, it took a lot of heavy lifting to make that happen, but like her energy is elevated. She, they, that retreat hit all the marks for her. She did it at like a, her parents' vacation home. I mean, it doesn't have wow. to be all of the gorgeous, far away, far out destinations. Mm. Like she, she had an amazing house in Cape Cod to use, like yeah. use that. And it, she transformed this house to be the, you know, where they were going to sit and all of the things. And to watch her energy right now, like mm. just post her retreat is just, I think it invigorates the coach as well into the work and recommits them to the work and service that they want to do in the world. And that's mm. really, really, that's an added bonus. <laughs> I love how you jumped there. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm so I excited. Like, I, hadn't even, I, hadn't, I hadn't even thought of that until just now. Wow. And how much of an added bonus that is for wow. the actual coach to like be so elevated and deeply yeah. committed. Yeah, get reconnected to why we're doing it, you know? Yeah, it, you're it, can get, it can get easy to just create content, be a freaking mill of keeping <laughs> up with the, the social media and content creation, doing coaching calls, but like to actually go have a transformational experience, be a part of it as a facilitator and also, you know, be making a difference in other people's lives and get reconnected with the magic that happens when people have the ahas, the breakthroughs. It's like, it's everything. Yeah. That's really special for a client, a yeah. coach to be able to experience as well and not feel as I, you know, if a coach feels massively depleted at the end of a retreat, mm. that's something to really look at mm. because it's and the energy ha has to s sustain all the way through, you yeah. know, I mean, yes, you're going to be tired. There's a difference between being tired yes. and being like depleted. Right. Yeah. My, you know, you're tired after because you've expended a lot of energy, but not depleted. Mm. So ha maintaining like self-care practices for the coach, knowing uh, what they, he or she needs going into the retreat to sustain that level of energy is uh, a really great tip for some of the people that are listening. What yeah. do you need to maintain throughout the whole time, mm. you know, mm. your energy because you're, you're going to be given out a lot. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. our responsibility to take care of our well-being and, you know, to make sure that we show up in the fullest capacity for our, our attendees. Right. But also mm -hmm. to take care of our well-being for ourselves. Right. <laughs> like yeah. not, not like get burned out doing a retreat. That's not why we do it. We do it to, yeah. to, to, to we design it at, at the beginning to make sure that we're fulfilled and they're fulfilled. And I love at the beginning, you talked about the breath you know, like each exercise yeah, there should, should feel like an inhale and then an exhale and, you know, just having a, a pacing and a kind of cycling of that energy to, to reach those high, exciting points. And then also in the, the, the stillness and the quietness to really soak into that moment and all of the gifts that that has to bring with us too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I learned that like, it's like a, a swinging cradle almost yeah. like we do something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love it. So I want to talk about uh, a retreat manager and, and that role that you play. What, what, what does that mean? And who, who are the type of people who could really value those types of services the most? Well, let's see. A re um, that's a really great question. A retreat manager is a lot of what I do. I manage the retreat for a client or, you know, coaches, teachers, um, uh, helping them to have it all organized, mm -hmm. um, communicating with the resort or finding the location or the Air Airbnb or whatever it's going to be like planning it together, having a partnership in the planning because there's so many details. I mean, I used to say 80% of a retreat happens before you even go, but it might even be closer to like 85, like 90, like, oh you know, getting to the retreat is like <laughs> the top of the mountain. There's a lot of stuff to climb before yeah. and it's not yeah. to overwhelm anybody that wants to make it by like a retreat manager who has a lot of experience knows all the different pieces that go into mm. all of it and the pros and cons of different things. It's, yeah. Yes, a resort might be a really amazing idea, but a resort also tends to charge a little like for the ice water and things like that, that maybe a personal chef at an Airbnb might not. And so all of these questions and helping a coach really envision, like what is it that you envision? Like who do you see sitting in that circle? What do you see them doing with you? Um, 
answering those questions as well as doing the logistics. And then um, some of the uh, going on the retreats is also, you know, somebody that where you get to be in your massive genius, holding space, teaching, facilitating for your clients and a retreat manager like myself is doing everything else. Mm -hmm. Like if uh, a chef gets sick, I'm the person that the chef would call in the middle of the night and be like, oh, I'm not going to be able to be there in the morning and Mm -hmm. not you because you have a a circle to lead at 7 a.m. or an excursion to lead at 7, you know, those kind of things. So helping to like everybody getting to do their genius zone. So, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, anything that the clients need that's not in the way of, you know, uh, the processing of their, their stuff. That's mm-hmm. more with the coach because they're there with their teacher, mm-hmm. like different things. I mean, there's always something that people forget. There's always something that somebody needs. It's, you know, some of the, my retreats will be like, you're like the retreat mom. And I'm like, ah, okay. I don't want to be like <laughs> the soccer mom, but I, I appreciate the sentiment that I, you feel like I have your back. Nurturing. Yes. Yeah, and it's super <laughs> nurturing. <laughs> Um, and then the other part of your question was, um, so we talked about manager, like, and who are the types of people who can really benefit from having a retreat manager? Right. Well, that's, um, any coach, honestly, I was having lunch with somebody yesterday sharing. She said, well, I, you know, I'm not like uh, ready for a Costa Rica trip or I'm not ready for, to go to even Sedona yet. Hmm. Um, but how can you Stacey work with me? And So I was saying, oh, that's such a good question because she's interested, but she's like, thinks that I'm too far down the road for her. Like, Mm. and so I said, no, there's lots of little tweaks that we can make on your retreat. That's even local that elevates the whole experience for your clients. And she said, like what? And I said, well, for instance, don't use paper plates at the Mm. retreat. Like, Mm it's really very affordable to rent a crate of dishes from a restaurant supply place or, a, mm-hmm. um, you know, a catering place. And like when you actually serve a meal on a real plate, as opposed to paper plate, you just elevated it. Yeah. And it's really the co- There's like little costs that yeah. are, you're going to spend money on paper plates, like just a teeny bit more. And now you've elevated it. Um, she was saying, well, what about like gifts? You know, I see all these retreats with the giving, you know, these gorgeous water bottles with the crystal inside and all of this, <laughs> all of these things. And so I was saying, okay, so maybe you don't do that, but maybe you make little dram bottles of some mm. essential oil. You don't yeah. have to give them like, you know, a whole packet with all the different roller balls and all of this stuff. Like, what can you do? What small tweaks can you make? And she yeah. was like, oh. And she said, well, for my next workshop, I have, um, you know, I bought all these water bottles and I'm going to get, make sure. And I, I said, what water bottles? She said, the ones from like Costco, the crystal geyser. I said, go around and take the label off of every one of those crystal geyser water bottles. And she said, why? I said, because when you take pictures of your workshop, you don't want crystal geyser being advertised. It's, <laughs> it will be completely innocuous if somebody just has a plastic clear bottle yeah. and if it says, you know, and it changes the energy of the picture wow. and it changes the energy. And she's like, are you serious? Cut the late. I said, yeah, don't give crystal geyser any, <laughs> no, no offense, crystal geyser, but like <laughs> those little tweaks, those yes. little elements elevate the experience for the client that you like took a little more care mm. in creating the, and beautifying the space. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like really yeah. those those little details that a lot of coaches might overlook, whether they're doing something small, local, just getting started, or putting on something like much bigger and mm-hmm. making a you know big impact in a lot of people's lives and destination travel, that kind of stuff. Then the the little things are what really make the difference of the experience. Yeah, I mean the content is important. Yeah. But I think that the whole energy and creation of the whole experience Mm. coupled with the content really makes for a massively amazing experience for clients. If you Mm. just focus on the content, that's not enough, honestly. And then I know there's really amazing content that people have to teach and you're so passionate about the content. Take just a little bit more time like with somebody like myself or even these tips that I'm sharing and like, just add them, it will elevate the whole experience for people. Mm. Um, it was at a, um, 
a, a day long workshop and I was helping the person put it on a little bit. And he had, I, he said, well, I really want, you know, people to take really good notes. Hmm. And I was like, okay, people will take notes. He's like, no, like, I'm really like, it's something important. I said, okay, what if we have like a container of markers on the table for everybody? Hmm. And he was like, really? I was like, yeah, just colorful pens. People will use them and be like, oh, instead of my regular ballpoint pen, I'll use that like purple marker. And it worked. Yes. And people were like, the, I love the markers. Wow. They were like, you know, Crayola markers. Like we're not talking like, you know, <laughs> fancy German, amazing or Japanese. You know, you don't have to, you can use Crayola. And like yeah. people colored on their notes and like, drew boxes around them or like mm. even men, men did too. I mean, they didn't do maybe the bubble look that they like, <laughs> did like, you know, and it was just a whole elevated experience for those clients because they were more engaged with the content mm. because of the materials and the, the, the look and feel and the, and the, 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 um, the playfulness of it yeah. and like energy. Yeah. Oh, markers are on the table. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody even raised their hand and said, are we allowed to use those? And they were, the person was like, yeah, no, they're, they're for you. Go ahead and use them. And he was, oh, okay. I haven't had markers in a long time. <laughs> and now look how much more engaged that person wow. was in the content. Wow. It's like the, you were working with, you know, younger children earlier and it's like, Hey, what, what is it that's going to bring these children alive? in this experience, in this, in this retreat, in this, whatever, tra like vacation mm -hmm. or transformational experience. And those same things would apply to adults because like all adults want to be free to play again, free to just be themselves, free to be expressed. And so if we can, mm -hmm. you know, make those tiny little tweaks along with having great content, like that's, mm -hmm. that's the ultimate experience. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You said it so well. That's mm. what I aim to do. And that's what I love. Because when you are working with children, it's like, okay, we're going to teach this concept and uh, let's, you know, add in this because it's more fun if you learn mm. this way. And like, we're still kids inside in some ways. I mean, learning it, we want learning to be fun. Mm. I mean, even core. And so I was working with somebody that does corporate events and she's going to do the mat, the markers. Cause you know, she's standing with like a lot of suits and she's got to wear a business suit. And I'm like, what if we put markers? Mm. I what would happen? And so she took it a step further and she put markers on the table and uh, rolled out uh, butcher paper. Ooh. And that was very interesting because people kind of like during breaks kind of doodled, mm. kind of let themselves just relax a little. Yeah. And they were more engaged in her content. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is great. So, you know, we're talking about being a, a retreat manager and, and really some, some value add of that. Um, what about like things that people miss in their experience? What are, what are coaches maybe not hitting the mark on, doing incorrectly? Is there anything else that you've seen that are kind of like big no-nos or things to watch out for? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, some of the known, so I, I don't see this happening a lot because, but I do, I do get a sense of it sometimes like we're human, we're drawn to more people, some people more than others, personality types, different people's energy. And uh, um, it's really important that a coach, you know, be watching all the energy in the room, not mm -hmm. just the people that they like best and feel more gravitated towards, but like, uh, in, <laughs> I used to call them uh, sub parties. You know, you don't mm. want to create sub parties in your retreat where like the cool kids are going to go in the hot tub later and mm. everybody else, like, how do you keep weaving everybody in wow. the whole party? Wow. Um, I don't see that a lot, but a little bit because there's always, you know, there's quieter people that hang back and mm -hmm. It, energy can get swept away with like the, you know, more gregarious, more, well, a quiet person can be gregarious, more um, extroverted kind of person. Yeah. And so to really look out for the introverts because they're, mm. they're also super important. The kids that are or not the kids, the people that are like kind of hanging back a little bit. Yeah. Um, that's one thing. What do I say? Well, we already talked about the follow through afterwards. Once mm -hmm. people go home is not the end of the retreat. I think, mm -hmm. I think the end of the retreat is the follow up after and how are you integrating this into your life? The yeah. experience that you had. Um, 
And uh, I see that get missed a lot, but I'm hoping that that changes as I talk about it more and more and people yeah. say, oh yeah, I've got to include a little bit of follow-up in some way, either individually or as a group. Mm. Um, what else? Uh, I think people get overwhelmed with building a retreat and really there's, it can be very simple, but you have to be all in. You can't just like, you know, I don't remember which author, which personal development teacher says this, but like either you're like a hell yes or you're mm. a no. Like yep. there's not like really, you know. Yep. <laughs> this morning I went for a work to work out. I was a hell yes because I hadn't worked out in a couple of days. Yesterday I was like thinking about it. I was a no. Like <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> But today, is, you know, when you're a hell yes for something. So if, if you want to plan a retreat, do it because do it because you really want to serve your clients in that way. And that's mm. something that you know that they will benefit from, not because it's trendy and not because like you see it on Instagram. Mm. That makes me nauseous. Like, oh, I guess I have to do this because other people are doing it. No, there are coaches and teachers that never want to build a retreat. And like, that's awesome. Don't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious, is there, is there a, a way to identify if something is the right fit for someone or not? Like, is it just checking in with themselves and saying, Hey, does this, does this really what I want? Is this what I want to, you know, a lifestyle that I want to create for myself? Is it as simple as that? I think so. Yeah. yeah. You just have to get in the stillness, in the quiet stillness, you know, what is, what works best for you? Um, mm. You know, my partner, Michael, has a successful boutique marketing firm for his clients. He's never on social media. Mm. Some people would be like, what? You're mm. never on social media. Mm. Social media, he doesn't want to be. He's working it from his authentic place. Yep. And yep. to me, I'm like, I'm on Instagram like all the time and I'm, yep. I ha it's fun for me. Yeah. But he's like, oh, I said, I tagged you in Instagram. And he's like, when? I'm like, the other day, you didn't see it. He's like, no. I didn't, like, Three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> like I expressed my love to you on Instagram. You didn't see it. And it, so it's not authentic to him, mm. you know, be in that space. But for me, it's playful and fun. So yeah. where, where do you get lit up as a coach? And that's going to draw the people and that's going to attract the people that want to work with you. If you're building a retreat because you think you're supposed to, mm. that's going to convey and like it's going to be a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. So in that, in those early phases, um, like let's say putting on an event, a retreat, co-creating it with you, what are some things that you cover in terms of like really designing it from the beginning to be, uh, you know, transformational? Is there anything else that you, you'd want people to think about if they're thinking about putting on a retreat? Yeah. Um, I, I like to think about the end in mind mm -hmm. first. Um, I did a number of programs at Stanford um, in like backward design curriculum and how to really mm -hmm. do that process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really want people to think about that. And then, then you put in the place, you know, you, you give some meat to the bones, you know, yeah. and um, add in different um, rituals or experiences. Um, I want, I would want coaches to know that like, there's a lot of different questions to answer. You know, what do you want? I mean, if also, and, and let's just call it out here. What do you, what is it? What, what do you want to make on this thing? Mm, like yeah. profitability yeah. is essential. And I know you've had a number of different speakers already talking about that today, but it's really important. Like yeah. you shouldn't go broke building a retreat for your clients. You should go be in service to your clients, but not go broke on it. Yeah. And you should make a nice profit. Yeah. You're doing your good work deserves to be well compensated, as mm, some teacher, you know, says all the time. Like, true. And so, answering all of those questions, okay, if like, what would, what do I want to make? How much, you know, what kind of opportunities do I want to, and experiences? Will I bring in other healers? Just like all of those questions, fall, mm. like it's almost like flowing down the river at the same time. Like, are we going to a resort? Mm. Are, pros and cons. Are we going to Airbnb? Pros and cons. How many people do you think you want on this retreat? Mm -hmm. Then there's like, you know, also the, a big marketing piece. Mm -hmm. You want to market it well out in advance enough that you have time to build it and get enough people to invite enough people to join you on this thing. And yep. sure. I mean, 
big te- big name teachers like you know will sell out Kripalu real fast, mm-hmm. but that's not everybody. So it even though like you know say Gabby Bernstein put something on at Kripalu, whoop, that's sold out in mm-hmm. like hotcakes. Yep. But somebody else that it doesn't have seven books under her name is going to need a little more time to build in. So like about ninety days, four months is ideal. Um, or even as far as a big retreat. So I'm building, I build my own retreats too. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking a group to India next October. Mm. I'm starting now because Mm. I want to give people 10 months worth of payments. Wow. So if you're thinking like that, like a big thing, like 10 days in India, that's, you don't want to just give people four months to plan. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to give, I'm going to do a whole year long marketing towards India next year. Wow. And we'll pay it off over the course of time. And then that makes India more accessible for more people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's those kind of questions and, um, you know, and then food and gifts and ways to, um, you know, get people have it in the downtime. Mm-hmm. What about like, you know, build in downtime for your retreat. A lot of times retreat planning gets filled up by like, oh, we got to do this and do this and do this and do this and do this. And it's like, no, let them digest what you did. Mm. And so where can you actually build in the downtime and the the time to just be with the clients? Because sometimes the juiciest and the most transformational conversations can happen after dinner. When people mm. are just sitting around and they get to sit with their coach and there's like this... Uh, natural flow of conversation like build those times in because that's when some of your clients will get so much benefit from being in your presence and being with you right and like learning Mm. alongside you and those nuggets of wisdom that will happen yeah yeah this is this is great i had a question i think some people might be wondering um what is the scope of working with a retreat manager like what's the scope of what you cover with that um so does that cover you know booking the hotels and the travel like what what can be covered with that so what can be covered with that is depends on what the coach wants i um do can do all the booking of the travel of you know once they decide like okay i want this place over this place and Mm -hmm. this is how much the deposit is and they put down the deposit and I do all the communication with that um organizing the flights for people um that's also something I highly suggest here's a big tip for uh destination retreats give your clients a tight window of when they can fly in Mm -hmm. from so you know say 10 to 3 you'll provide the transportation from the airport because people will pick like oh this flight's $400 less. I want to come in at 9 PM. And now you're like all over the map trying to pick people up. And that gets really Tetris puzzle Mm. nightmare. And you want to start the retreat in the eat. Say you want to start the retreat at dinner, but you have somebody coming in at nine. It's Mm. like, no. So you make like a nice, a nice, I like 10 to three, like Mm. come in between or 10 to four or something like that. And then the retreat starts at like, you know, five, but, or whenever you want it to start the next morning or whatever. Um, yeah. So doing all of that, uh, sussing out the, um, and interviewing the different chefs, interviewing mm. the different food, um, making, creating the meal plan with dietary, getting all the dietary needs yeah. met because <laughs> we got a lot of them around, oh. <laughs> right? A lot of people have a lot. Um, so doing some of the, doing that, organizing the transportation, putting together different, um, you know, the folders and all of that kind of stuff and being the last one there at the end of the retreat, because, um, Mm. you know, there should always be somebody, the coach, then the teacher should also be last, but like just having another person that's like, I guess, retreat mom, Mm. you know, that is like there seeing all the birds fly away. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, is that just leaving the retreat space or do you confirm that they got to the airport? Did you check in on something like that? No, I mean, I like (laughs) when they were teenagers, um, I would often travel with them on the airplane. So Mm. I would, I'd be with them, but, uh, some of the people have texted me like, Oh, got through security, my flights on time. And that's really nice, but I can't expect adults to do that. (laughs) (laughs) But I do like to make sure that they're like, you know, the transportation picks them up from their hotel or from the resort, I mean, yeah. or from the Airbnb and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, the flex working with the coach during, so when somebody works with me, um, I like to call them, I like to have faculty meetings is what I call it with um, the coach that I'm working for. And like hmm. what I'm seeing with the clients, what she or he is seeing happening with the clients. Okay. Maybe have you checked in, you know, cause I'm another set of eyes and right. with my level of experience of observing people for that's what I, I mean, teachers and administrators, I watch people. Yeah. Have you checked in with that person? I was noticing she or he was like, you know, seeming really withdrawn or distracted during mm. your last session. She's up there teaching. You might have not noticed, or he might have not noticed that that person was feeling distracted during that last session. So another set of eyes to really like hold the space for the clients. And it's not a gossipy place of like talking about them. It's mm. like, a faculty meeting of yeah. like, okay, how, how's that? And having a check-in and yeah. really seeing, really seeing what the, you know, the transformation can be enhanced, what, yeah. what changes might be needed. Yeah. If people seem really tired, maybe getting up at six tomorrow morning for a big hike might, maybe we do an evening hike and switch mm. things around. Mm. So not being so married to the flow of your retreat that you're missing out the needs of the, of the, the clients. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I once led a, re, uh, a retreat. This is many years ago, sophomores, high school sophomores. And we were doing this like scavenger hunt. And then I had this other thing planned and I could just tell their energy was so not into what I was doing. <laughs> And with them and like, I was like, okay, everybody gather around, make a circle. And apparently there was a real big issue that these kids needed to process. Mm. And so had I not been observant to like their energy and I was just like full steam ahead on my agenda, mm. we never would have had the retreat we had because I wouldn't have stopped that train. And I did, I was like, let's sit, what's, what's up? Why, well, the energy feels really off. You guys are like, you, you know, you don't, do you not, do you think the scavenger hunt sucks? Do you like what? And they're like, one kid finally raised his hand and said, and spoke his truth. And then I said, is our other students feeling that way? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, okay, we have some work to do. Once we processed and got through this whole big thing, wow. they're like, can we do the scavenger hunt tomorrow morning? And I was like, yeah, we can. Cool. But you see what I mean? Like, yeah. had I kept my agenda, we would have never have had such a gorgeous opportunity to be, to really understand one another and have that trans that retreat was epic for those teenagers. Yeah. That, that made that class so tight yeah. and that group of, you know, and, and you can transfer that to adults like that would, that would make that group of people so tight. Why? Because they were seen, they were heard and they were honored. Mm. And like, well, isn't that all we ever really want is to be seen, heard and honored for our truth. Mm. <laughs> and when we are wow we feel golden feels yeah. good yeah. somebody 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 saw us yeah I'm, I'm curious have you ever found someone who uh doesn't put enough content enough work into it and just it's too open-ended and too free yeah has, it, has that ever happened <laughs> yeah that's too loosey-goosey that <laughs> that's ooh. no that makes my that makes me nervous because <laughs> There, you're creating a container. Yeah. You know, so if you can always have some tricks up your sleeve of like, oh, okay, I'm not going to tell them about this activity, but we might add this one in mm. if it seems like they're needing and ready for something else and we have too much downtime. Yeah. Always come with like an activity or a, um, a circle or something in mind that you can do mm -hmm. with your people. Um, if the if it seems like they're ready for something else and you have that space where they're having too much downtime but like it's a little lazy to create a retreat where you're like oh well just for you know five hours that we'll just hang poolside no that's not i mean <laughs> no. that's i think that's a little lazy yeah and not empowering like that to that coach like i would say own your power, brother or sister. Mm. Like, you know, you've been a part of a lot of things. Plan it for them. Mm. They want to be with you. They want to learn from you. And they want to hang out with you poolside, but not for like this big, long period of time. Yeah, yeah structure. People, th I believe that people like structure. Yes, yes. 
Yeah. It's like it give, feels good. It feels yeah, safe. give people expectations, you know, have have rules, have boundaries because if there's just, you know, chaos, then nobody feels safe and like they right. can count on what their experience is going to be like and then feel free to let whatever out within them that they are, you know, in that experience, yeah. then they can let that out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's safety and structure. It feels it feels good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So good. It's, it's fun to talk about. I can talk about this stuff all day long. My like, goodness, <laughs> so good. <laughs> this is awesome. So, like, I think the the little details that's super important for everyone who's listening. Like, really pay attention to that. Um, begin with the end in mind. Like, reverse engineering is another big thing I, I heard from you. Is like, what do you want the outcome to be? And especially not just at the retreat, but after the retreat, you know, like the, the debriefing, the follow-up, the, you know, reintegration into life, like that's such an important part. And for anyone who's, you know, on the journey, whether that you're already hosting retreats, you want to take it to the next level, or, uh, you know, maybe you're at the beginning of your retreat experience and you want to learn more. I like Stacy, I just see you as someone who can facilitate those next steps to maximize whatever the next retreat is at whatever level that they're going to be putting it on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. There's so many good little tweaks and so many little ways to, you know, add more, a little more value and a little more depth to a retreat. And it, it's not about, you know, spending more money on more stuff. No, 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 no. It's about, you know, creating really thoughtful, mindful, soulful, like parts of the experience that elevates. I mean, metal forks over plastic forks like it's mm. not and they don't all need to match i mean that's not you know what i mean like these little things it's so funny and it sounds so weird like why does that matter but like it does <laughs> it just does or if you're gonna go if you have to do plastic like you know consider the ones that are biodegradable it mm. elevates it yeah yeah <laughs> it it's tells like your clients that it th that the earth matters to yeah. you yeah, it's like what's the values that you want to be communicated through exactly. this retreat, right? Like if you yeah. are using paper plates, the value is uh, budgeting. The value is I don't care about the planet. You know, that's not what you want to communicate. <laughs> no, you want to walk your talk because you know they do care about it. They're just yeah. like, oh, I can't afford it. Oh, I can't afford. It. Uh, yeah. And now it's like this like tight like thing where it's like, oh, wait a minute, maybe we need to use paper plates, but we can have everybody. We, you know have uh, forks and real knives or like, I, there's so many ways. And I love to talk with coaches about, you know, when I, when somebody comes to me with a retreat plan or an, a retreat idea, I get really just supercharged on how we can elevate that retreat to the, you know, the next level and mm -hmm. deliver the message and the, the value and the promise that they are wanting to do for their clients. Yeah. Well, I get really excited about it. <laughs> so great this is so great so i want to uh share with people how they can stay connected with you what do we want them to do next and then also i want to recap with like some final takeaways right after that but let's tell people what what are their next steps how can they get involved with you how can they have a conversation work with you what are their next steps stacy yeah thanks um so the simplest and most and the fastest way to get in touch with me is through facebook at my name stacy meredith cohen just Facebook message me, friend request me. I'm, uh, I use that platform a lot to share a lot of um, value tips and wisdom, retreat wisdom. So mm -hmm. even if they're not wanting to have a conversation, like just get in that world with me and find out some more of these tips and tricks. I will, I post them regularly um, and message, just message me. I'm also on Instagram at Stacy Meredith underscore. Mm -hmm. Somebody had the just at Stacy Meredith. <laughs> so I had to add the underscore. Um, and I'm on Instagram as well. And I share tips and things like that. And a lot about my own personal lifestyle. And that's really the easiest way just through Facebook. I mean, that's where we're at right now, too. I love it. I love it. So awesome. So everyone connect with Stacy. If you're catching this on the replay or podcast, Stacy Meredith Cohen, and uh, I'm going to spell that out for you. S-T-A-C-Y-M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H and then Cohen, C-O-H-E-N. And of course, it'll be in the show notes, all that great stuff, but definitely connect with Stacy. And uh, Stacy, let's wrap it up with some final takeaways, what you want people to really get from this interview and implement. Mm, thank you. I really want people to get from this 
that your retreat can be gorgeous, beautiful, soulfully curated and have all of the, the feeling of a massively luxurious retreat, far destination, even if you're at the beginning stages and you're doing something local in your area. Um, I want people to really think about the follow up with their clients mm. because that's where you're going to continue to make an impact in their life through that integration of what they experience with you, whether it's a day retreat or a whole weekend. Mm. Um, that working with somebody like myself is really accessible and important. It's not something that you'll do way down there when you have a four day retreat somewhere. It's like, no, start now mm. with the one day day long workshop that you are hosting. And then so that you, you do get there with the four, you're not going to like all of a sudden be like at this, Oh, I'm just going to do these workshops and someday I'll be able to work with Stacey. No, like <laughs> let's start having those kind of conversations now. Yeah. And, and within your somebody's budget so yeah. that you eventually, you know, bring me on your four day retreat, but like, yeah. let's start at the beginning too. Yeah, this, um, is so, this is so great. I love what you said there because it's like, you know, just what's the next step you can take? And for me, I've found just seeking the information, being willing to have a conversation and like, you know, I think it can be intimidating for people to, to connect with experts and yeah. service providers and say, hey, I want to do this, but I don't know how to do it. It can, it can kind of be intimidating. So like, I just want for you listening or watching right now, like, find the person who resonates with you like Stacy and just connect and say, Hey, I got some questions about this. I don't know how it's all going to work out. I don't know timing, or maybe you do all know this, all, all this stuff, which is great too. But if you don't have all the answers, that's okay. That's, that's what Stacy's here to like really facilitate you with and take you every next step. And that might look like working with Stacy. It might look like, Hey, come back to me when you got this, this, and this in place, or here's one tweak yeah. that you can make in your next couple steps. You know, it's like, whatever it is, the conversation will be valuable. Yeah, that it really, that's beautifully said because when people talk with me, even, you know, they're like, well, I can, I would love to do just an hour and pick, you know, I'm like, okay, let's do that. This is what, you know, it's like to work with me for, I, I even offer that like, okay, let's book an hour. It's yeah. let's dive into your retreat. And I like, because my big mission is I like to have a lot of impact on this planet. Yes. And when I help your retreat be more successful, I've made, I have served my purpose mm -hmm. by having the impact on your clients. They don't need to know. It's not like I'm asking you to put list me on anything, but like I know mm -hmm. that I've made an impact by making small tweaks with you. And now I've served my purpose by serving, helping you with your purpose. It's, it's like super win-win. I love yeah. it. I love it. even our pre-interview call. You were you were mentioning how like it's not about me getting the spotlight. It's about like me helping this expert, helping this you know service provider, coach, whatever to like really shine and show up. And so I, I get that from you, Stacy. That like you're just there to make the person who has the vision like bring that to life in a successful, impactful way that really makes a difference for their for their tribe. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. that's and that's that serves my purpose, right? Yeah. Like yeah. the impact that I want to make, and not that yeah. That's, that feels good. Mm, I love it. I yeah, love it. Awesome. Thanks, well, Stacy, you are a superstar. Everyone who's listening or watching right now, connect with Stacy. Ask your questions, and she will help you get to your next level. Stacy, thanks for being here, and oh, we'll see you soon. Okay. You. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. It was awesome. Thanks, everybody.